Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be testing out some new makeup that just arrived to Sephora. So if you want to see what that is, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market, sharing my thoughts with you guys. And Sephora is like a heavy hitter for me. I try and cover as much of the new arrivals at Sephora as possible. So there's a lot of things that recently came out like kind of piece by piece where I wasn't interested in doing a whole dedicated review on, but I was having FOMO. Like I needed to know how the quality of these new products were. So that is what this video is. I have four stars of the show today. I'm gonna try out the new Fenty Beauty Bright Fix eye brightener. I'm gonna try out the ADH face palette right here. This one I really was not interested in but I needed to know why it was so expensive. <laughs> I picked up the Huda Beauty Light Glow Obsessions and then also a Huda Beauty Lip Cream. This one's a little bit older but I was curious about it. I had to try it out. So that's what this is. Four reviews, one video. Obviously I'm wearing all the products right now so let's get into it. Alright you guys so the first product that we're gonna dig into is the Fenty Beauty Bright Fix Eye Brightener. So this is $25. It just recently launched on Sephora and and I, I definitely made a mistake. I picked up the shade number three, Seashell. The reason I chose that shade was because it was neutral. I have a neutral undertone for light to light medium skin tones. I have a, I lean more so light medium, but light to light medium normally is a good match for me, but I thought it was weird that this was the third lightest shade. I was like, no way, it's gonna be too light for me, but I picked it up anyways because I was doubtful. And uh, based on swatching, this is gonna be way too light for me. So the claims on this, hydrating light coverage natural finish long wearing. So it's supposed to brighten, which I guess is why it's so light, but I, I don't like under eye brighteners. That's my problem. I don't know what I was thinking. I think it's important to have a shade lighter like one shade lighter than your natural skin tone. It shouldn't be the exact same color as your foundation just for dimension, but I don't like too bright of an under eye. I don't know why I made this mistake. But anyways, since it's such a light natural coverage, I wanted to do a light natural coverage foundation. So I do have the Shantikai Future Skin Gel Foundation underneath. I mean, you can't get more skin-like than this foundation. Like you can see my imperfections, but it is what it is. Like nobody has perfect skin unless you're, you do. And in that case, good for you. So here's what it looks like. <laughs> mm, I hope this is light coverage for the sake of <laughs> how the color is looking, but that's what the tip looks like. Very weird. Let's find out. I'm gonna just use a brush to place it. Yeah, see, I know I should have also got a darker color because I was watching somebody else try this out and they were around my skin tone and they got the sixth lightest shade. Yeah, I was like, uh oh, this is not gonna be good. But anyways, okay. Good. <laughs> Not bad now. It definitely brightens the under eye for sure. Okay, you know what? Never mind. I'm feeling a lot better. Because it's so light coverage, it doesn't look bad. Wow. Transformational. Okay. And it's very, very nice looking. So I'm going to put just a little bit more. Okay, so if you're around my skin tone, I mean, I still would recommend going a little bit deeper. This is still too light on me, but because it's nice and sheer, it works out. Normally, like, I do like sheer concealers. I prefer a medium coverage concealer, I would say, because I don't think I need too much coverage, but this is perfect for tinted moisturizers and those lighter coverage foundations for summer because it doesn't look like too much. For me, a pet peeve about makeup is sometimes people will say, you want a full coverage concealer with like a tinted moisturizer so it counteracts the coverage. To me, it looks like you're wearing a tinted moisturizer with a ton of concealer and you can see exactly where that concealer is at. So this guy is gonna be perfect for the summer months when you're wearing something lighter like a tinted moisturizer because it gives you that brightness and it gives you just a touch of coverage coverage without looking like, oh, she has concealer. Like, I don't know, that has always looked weird to me. Don't knock a light coverage concealer because it's perfect for a light coverage base. I'm very impressed that it gave a little bit of coverage. Like I said, dark circles aren't my enemy. I don't have really bad dark circles. They're there. I'm a tired girl, they're there. But it did just enough to make my skin look a little bit brighter, a little bit more lifted, and the shade wasn't as scary as I thought it was gonna be. So I don't think you need to be too picky with the shades because it is quite sheer. It's definitely a light coverage. And if you do want more coverage, I would recommend using something like an under eye corrector underneath. Charlotte Tilbury has a really great one. Becca, before it sells out, is a really fantastic one. I like this so far. I'm gonna 
very, very, very lightly powder, in case you're wondering. And you know what? Let me, just for the sake of evening everything out, a lot comes out at once. I can't just get like a little bit to squeeze out. Just to even everything out, we're gonna put some in the center of the face. And this is just gonna help highlight the face, make everything look a little bit more seamless and dimensional. And then just cause I have a bunch of extra product cause I couldn't get just a little bit, just gonna put some down here as well. So yeah, one gripe with the actual product itself is I feel like I cannot limit the amount of product that comes out because a bunch just squeezes out. But that's like a minimal thing. You can see how this looks on the face. Honestly, if you can get a good color, this might be pretty all over the face. So obviously I haven't powdered it or anything, but I think it's just a really nice flattering concealer. Honestly, if any of you guys have any teenage daughters who are starting to get into makeup, this would be really good for them. Okay. I'm gonna finish the rest of my face, get it ready, and we'll move into the next couple of products that I have. I zoomed in a little bit closer that, so that you could see things better. I just went in with just a touch of the Charlotte Tilbury Translucent Setting Powder. Just put a very light veil over my skin. That's just what I prefer to do in my typical makeup routine. And we're gonna move on to the next product, which is from ABH. And I was not going to pick up this product, but ultimately when I was placing my order of other things, I got curious because the price on this I thought was very, very high. And I was like, hmm, why? Is it $60? So we have the ABH face palette. So they recently launched a face trio in three different shades. Now on Sephora, there's the first two shades and then on the ABH website is where you can get the deepest shade. Obviously I'm on the lighter side. So I picked up Italian Summer, which is the lighter shade. So this is made in the USA. Here is what the packaging looks like. It's not luxe or anything, but it is definitely high end packaging here. It feels, feels very, very sturdy. So here's what the Italian Summer looks like. You do get a small mirror in here. And yeah, I wasn't very interested in this palette because it looks boring. How many face palettes do we need like these? I already own a lot. So I swatched them before and I must say, they do feel rather creamy. Very, very high quality is what the texture of these powders feel like, as opposed to the next product that I'm going to talk about. So we're going to use all three of these on my face today. And they look very... Pretty. I'm not gonna lie. The blush you can see has a little bit of a sheen in there. Very, very subtle. So it's not gonna be completely flat. And I'm happy I ended up with this shade instead of the medium shade because this bronzer <laughs> looks kind of dark, no? Okay, so I'm gonna use my Tom Ford P22 brush. I did spot clean it. I'm gonna go in just a little bit. I feel like we could get too much product with this if I'm not too careful. And plus, since I don't have a lot of coverage, lighter is better. I think if you're very, very fair, this might not be the palette for you because this bronzer is a little bit dirty on me. It looks a little bit accentuated because I don't have much coverage on my face, but uh, this bronzer is just a bit too deep for me. And I know a lot of you were happy that ABH came out with three separate face palettes, but I must say this bronzer is quite deep for me having more of a light medium skin tone. Regardless, like I was going to get the lightest shade. There was no need for me to get the medium shade. But this is a very, very deep bronzer. It looks a little bit dirty over here. And I think that could be, you know, if I put on a foundation with a little bit more coverage, that could be aided and look a little bit more smooth and well blended. But I shouldn't have to adjust in that way to get this bronzer to work. If my face looked more flat because I had a fuller coverage foundation on, I think this would look better, but I just don't think a bronzer should adjust to that. So if you have more of a medium skin tone, I think you will actually like this. Maybe not even medium. If you're just a little bit darker than me, you can totally make this work. Definitely use a light hand, but this bronzer is not good if you have lighter skin than myself. So just Keep that in mind, it's quite dark. But the tone is really pretty. It's like more neutral. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is a very, very pretty tone. Just a little bit too deep for me. Now we're gonna go into the blush. This is like a peachy pink kind of corally blush. Definitely a color that I lean towards a lot. It reminds me a lot of one of the first blushes I've ever owned from MAC. But anyways, I'm using a blinged brush at 14. It's an angled blush brush. And you can see there's a little bit of kickback here. Yeah, I mean, this is a gorgeous blush. It's blending on beautifully, pretty easy to work with, very natural color. Now, I've never personally tried an ABH bronzer before, so I can't speak of how that compares. This is a little bit more creamy. I feel like the previous blush formula I had tried from ABH. Now, I've never tried their individual blushes. I don't even know if they had individual blushes, but I have a blush trio from ABH. It's quite an old product, and those definitely feel drier. 
And I thought they did have a nice blush formula before, but these definitely have a little bit more creaminess and hydration to them. And lastly, I'm gonna do the highlighter just on one cheek because we do have a highlight palette that I'm going to talk about next. So I'm gonna take a Kaleidos H2 brush, H1 brush, excuse me. We're just gonna see how this looks on this cheek. Definitely is not like the Amrezi highlighter, if you have that one. That one is more slick on top, kind of like a gelée formula. This one is a powder highlight formula. It's not too shiny, which is nice. It doesn't have a metallic look on the cheek. It actually blends in really naturally. Taking a closer look, it almost has a pinky hue to it. A little bit more golden, maybe that's the blush peeking through. But overall, I mean, the three definitely have cohesion. They definitely belong in a palette together. My only kind of flaw here is, I think for this being the lightest shade, the bronzer is a bit deep, but I mean, hey, that's the opposite of the issue that's been happening, so just depends. Just be aware it is quite deep. I think $58 for ABH is definitely steep for what they typically launch. I will say these powders do feel like higher quality than I've ever dealt with as far as ABH. They just feel more creamy. Something about the formulation is a little bit more expensive feeling comparing it to some of the luxury formulas that I try. Do I think it's worth $58? I personally don't because I don't find the colors to be innovative, nor do I find the formulation to be very innovative either. It's nice, and I can definitely see why somebody would want this. It's nice to have all in one, have a really great formula, but to me this isn't something that I would say is a need for my viewers. That's kind of my thoughts on this. It's definitely really nice, but I, I think $58 is a bit steep. Had they added more colors, you know, I think... <sighs> For three colors, only one use of each product is a lot. I think it needed to be a six pan palette to make the price worth it. Let's move on to the next product. We have the Huda Beauty Mini Glow Obsessions Highlighter Face Palette. This one also has a light, medium, and deep skin tone option. And you can see the packaging. It's a face of Huda. She looks like the Statue of Liberty to me here. I, I, it's fine, I don't care having her face on there, but it's just funny to me. This guy's made in China, and just speaking on what I know from the formulations that she launches, I find that her formulas made in China don't normally match up to other formulas that she has, which she typically goes to Italy for. But that being said, this is $29, much more affordable than what you're gonna get with the ABH. Obviously, they're different because this is a highlight palette, but in terms of price, I mean, this is much more affordable. So you get four highlighters here. I'm trying to see if there's anything worth mentioning. I got the light. This is for fair to medium skin tones. I can definitely see this working with that array of skin tones. It says it's a highly pigmented face palette that features four flattering shades to blush, low light, and highlight. Hmm, interesting. I didn't realize she said you could like do all of the above. So let me swatch these. Now the first time I swatched these, they felt not very creamy to me. I think now that I've dug off that top layer, they do feel a little bit more creamy. Now they are not as creamy feeling as the ABH formula for comparison. They honestly don't feel all that great to me for the type of highlights that I like, but here's what we're looking like. So I think I'm gonna try this as a blush topper and then also as a highlight. So of course I'm gonna try this shade right here as the blush topper. And you know what, this actually, Gorgeous blush topper. Wow, I really like that if you have my skin tone. Okay, fantastic. And we're gonna start off with this shade right here, still using that Kaleidos brush. Very pretty. You can see a little bit of texture emphasization going on, but that's the nature of highlighters. There are very few formulas that actually diminish texture. Now we're going to the light one, just right here at the very top. So you can definitely build that sheen right there. So here's like all of the Huda put together and then just the ABH, definitely much more subtle highlight from the ABH. This really amped up my cheek over here. Just for a little bit more evenness, I'm gonna put a little bit of the blush right here. Okay, we are gonna combine both of the face palettes now and use them on the eyes. Show a little bit of versatility here. Uh, normally I don't like to use face palettes on the eyes, but I know sometimes things happen. You didn't bring an eyeshadow palette with you. It's just easier to go into this. You can see how pigmented that blush is, oh my goodness, yeah. I feel like this should have gone maybe in the medium palette. I don't know. That makes me wonder how deep 
the bronzer is in the medium palette for the ABH because that's crazy. This is like an eyeshadow, not like the bronzer. Normally when you put a bronzer in the crease, it's a little bit lighter. Uh, this one, <laughs> not so much, but it works great as a crease color. It increases that versatility in that regard. Put a little bit down here for some definition for the eyes. There was one shade in the Huda palette that I have not used, so we're going to use this shade. And you can see there's no fallout. This is not a gelée formula. It is a powder formula, but you're not getting any kickback from it. So it's pretty hard pressed, but you still get a lot of color off as you can see. That is a gorgeous lid color, is it not? Okay, we're gonna get a little bit more of a pinpointed brush and we're gonna go in with the lightest shade. So these highlights do pick up a lot of pigmentation here. So it makes all four shades really great to use on the eyes as well. There will be some highlighters that I feel just don't look as good on the eyes if they're a little bit more sheer or maybe they're a little bit harder to pick up or sometimes a highlight can be so loosely pressed that it gets all over your face as opposed to the eyelid. These, because of its consistency, stick to the lid very well, making them work just like eyeshadows. So I'm going to put on some eyeliner and lashes and then we're gonna finish off by trying one of the Huda Powder Bullet Cream Glow Lipsticks. So I'll be right back. All right, so you guys can see the very simple, natural look that I created with the product so far. So we're gonna finish with lips. Now this product is not as new, but it's new to me. I've never tried it before. And it kind of, like I missed the ball when this launched. I bought the Huda Beauty Lip Contour, which launched at the same time as the lipsticks. But for some reason, I missed that the lipsticks had launched. So anyways, I am gonna use the Lip Contour from Huda Beauty, which is her lip liner line and it's a fabulous lip liner very very creamy I have the shade honey beige so I'm gonna use that to lightly line the outside of my lips I mean, you can just see it gliding across the lips with so much ease. Just like that, that should be good. I picked up the shade Honey Bun. So these guys are $25 each. You know, it's about the price of a normal high-end lipstick, but still kind of pricey. And there's lots of different nude shades in this collection. So this is supposed to be like a creamy, hydrating formula with a lot of pigmentation. It's just a cream formula, really. So this is what the packaging looks like. Very cute. It is plastic, but it looks nice. It feels nice. I'm trying to see, where are these? Made. These are made in Italy and the Honey Bun again is the shade that I have. It has an 18th month shelf life. Most of the time lipsticks will have like a 12 month shelf life. So this one's a little bit better. Let me swatch it for you I suppose, right? We can see what the color looks like. It's like a nice pinky nude color and let's try it out. Definitely a cream formula. You can see I went over a couple of times. Let me just show you on site. So I would suggest actually building up it's not a super smooth cream formula. It has a little bit of drag as you apply it to the lips. That's gonna help with wear time, so that's not a bad thing, but you can see the shine. I mean, this is a great everyday lip color. If you like nudes like me, gorgeous color. I mean, it's nothing extraordinary lipstick-wise as far as formula. It's a nice cream formula. It feels really good. It feels a little bit thicker than I would like, and it takes a bit more building up than I would like, but it's not that hard to put it on, so that's me being extra picky. All right, guys, so let's back it up. Oh, or I can bring it forward, but you can see the look better this way. Her, here's how we're looking. So overall today we created a pretty natural makeup look. I have to say I'm not in love with anything that I've tried today. I don't think there's really anything in this video that I feel like you need to absolutely run out and grab. Start off with the concealer. This is the one that surprised me the most. I was sure I wasn't going to like it, especially with the color that I chose, but I'm pleasantly surprised. I think this is actually probably my favorite thing in today's video just because I feel like it's going to be so useful this summer for those of you who like lighter coverage. This is the perfect product for lighter coverage makeup and it actually very much blurred my under eyes as well. It reacted very nice with that setting powder. I think it overall it looks really really good so um scratch that. I take that back. I really like this. It does brighten. It does blur. I don't necessarily know about hydration but it definitely didn't dry out my under eyes. So this really does seem to do everything that it claims and probably a product that I normally wouldn't grab for but it does everything it's supposed to do and if you feel like you have a purpose for this, this fe you feel like this sounds like it's made for your type of makeup application, I definitely recommend this one. This one's really nice. Now, the more that I think about it, if you're my skin tone, I don't really recommend the ABH face palette. I mean, it's fine. The quality is really, really nice, but for me, the tones in here aren't perfect, but that's just a personal thing as far as your skin tone. I just find the bronzer to be really too pigmented and too deep for me, but as far as the formulation, everything is really creamy, but I do think $58 is very, very steep for what you're actually getting. This is not an innovative product. There are plenty of face palettes that are trios such as this all on the market that's been around for many, many years. So while the formulation's nice, I don't know. It's 
it's a luxury price and I, I feel like I'm not getting the luxury experience with this so it's not worth it for me. I did like the highlight palette more than I thought I would. I used this once before today's video and I was like I don't really care for it but today I actually ended up liking it more for the kind of formula that it has. The first time I wore this I didn't like the consistency of this. I didn't like how the texture was almost sticky but I've actually learned to appreciate that today because I feel like this formula adheres to the eyelid really well. So while this is a highlighting palette, I mean I use it today for some versatility. It gave me a nice blush topper, it gave me a really nice build of highlight as well, and it stuck to the eyelid really well. So this is going to work awesome for eye shades also. So $30, this one I definitely think is worth the price and I do like it. Like I said, I don't love it. It's not the most amazing highlighting glowing palette that I've ever used. But I think for $30, it's really, really nice. So I do enjoy this. I don't regret picking this one up. Lastly, again, this was the older product, but I do like the Huda Beauty lipstick. And I will say, while the formula doesn't completely wow me, it's a really nice formula. What wows me about this are the colors. So while I only picked up one, every time I've seen a person use these lipsticks, I've always loved the colors. They always look so amazing on everybody. So I think her range of colors in here is really what stands out. And I haven't seen any of the colors look bad on anybody. In fact, the colors look so good that it encouraged me to pick this color up. And there we have it. That was me testing all of the new makeup at Sephora that I did not get the chance to do an individual review of. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. I guys have a good one.